Hi, everybody. We are live. Um, sorry, I'm just setting up YouTube and Zoom, and I've done it at the same time today, and this is going to confuse me. Hi, YouTube. Hi, Zoom. Um, right, I'm actually going to take... Um, sorry, I'm just waiting for my co-hosts to join on Zoom so I don't have to let people in. And then we can start. Um, where are they? Okay, they're not here. Good evening, everybody. I hope we are all doing well. Sorry, you can hear my son playing in the background. Sorry, I don't know where my co-hosts are on Zoom. Where are they? Okay, they're not here. We've literally got 28 minutes today because I have to go. Um, they're not here. Where are they? Okay, we're just going to start. Okay, guys, let's just, my hair is wild. Let's just start by thanking God for today. Let's start by thanking God for our lives. Let's just thank God for everything. And um, those on Zoom, there's like a few of us. So let's um, unmute and let's pray and let's just thank God. Let's just thank God. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our lives. Lord, we're so grateful to you, oh God. We're so grateful for our lives. We're so grateful for your word, oh God. We're so grateful for everything. We're so grateful, Father, for your word, which is yay and amen. We're, thank you. we're thankful, Lord, for your great love towards us, oh God. We're so grateful to you, God, for all the amazing things that you do for us, Lord. There is truly no one like you. We are privileged, Lord, to be your children. We are so privileged to be your children, Father. We just thank you for the love that you bestow upon us. We thank you, Father, for your hand that's upon us always, oh God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. We thank you, Father, that even when we are faithless, Lord, you are faithful. Lord, we are so grateful, Father. We thank you. We praise you, oh God. Father, we say indeed you are good. God. We just exalt and extol you. We thank you, Father, for life. We thank you, Father, for your hand. We thank you, Lord, for our children. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our parents. We thank you for our siblings, oh God. We're just so grateful to you, Lord. We say, Lord, we are grateful. We are in, we are so, 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 so grateful. We are indebted to you, oh God. We thank you, Father, for the death and the resurrection of your son. We thank you that by the death and resurrection of your son, that, Father, we are able to come before your throne, oh God, that, Father, we can come boldly to your throne, Lord. We are just so grateful, oh God. We say thank you. Thank you, oh God. We do not take anything for granted. Thank you for the air that we breathe. Thank you for the life that we live, oh God. Father, thank you for the people that you've placed in our lives, oh God. Thank you for the various opportunities that you've given us. Thank you for even the closed doors, oh God. For the doors that you close, Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, we praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Um, okay, she is. I was literally just to say my co host stems have disappeared on me. But she's here, she's arrived. So let me make her co-host. Okay, our next prayer point is we are going to pray the prayer of repentance. We're just gonna ask God to, sorry, multitasking isn't the best sport these days. Okay, um, we're gonna ask God to forgive us for anything that we've done that is not according to his will. We're asking for his mercy, we're asking him to pour his spirit upon us to make us aware of the things that we do that are not pleasing unto him, the things that we do that do not represent him well, the things that we do that just don't speak kingdom, the things that we do that confuse people, the things that we do that might make people think, is she really a Christian? The things that we do that maybe even deter people away from the kingdom where they might say, oh, if that's what Christians are doing, I'm not interested. Or whatever it might be. It might be a thought that we're having. It might be a way that we're even feeling. It might, whatever it might be against the will of God. We're going to pray right now. We're going to ask him for his forgiveness. We're going to ask him to pour his spirit upon us and to just give us the heart to understand what his will is. For, I'd say for the majority, um, I hope for the majority, if there is anything that we do that is sin, it's not intentional. Intentional sin, it's it's anything. It's not stealing. It's not um, you know something that's in the Ten Commandments. But it might just be the thoughts that we have, and we have to understand that every thought has to be held to the obedience of Christ. It has to be held captive to the obedience of Christ. So we're praying right now that Lord, even our thoughts, purge us from anything that does not look like You. Purge us from the thoughts that we have, and anything that we might have said, anything we might have thought that does not please You, that leads us astray, that leads us away from You. Father, we're asking that you have mercy. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask in the name of Jesus for your mercies right now. Lord, we ask that, Lord, you give us the heart 
oh God, of repentance, that Father, if there's anything that we're doing that's not pleasing to you, and if we're doing that comes against you, Lord, so that Lord, in the name of Jesus, you would have mercy, oh God, Lord, fill your spirit upon us. We ask, Father, that Lord, you would church, oh God, fill us with your spirit, that Lord, you know what to say. If there's any thought that we've said, any, any words that we have spoken, anything that we've done that's not pleasing to you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus for your mercy. We ask that, Father, you have mercy upon us in the name of we ask, Father, that you would just have mercy upon us, O oh God. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that Lord, you pour your spirit upon us, O oh God. That, Father, we would hear you. We would hear you, O oh God, when you speak. That we would hear you, Lord, when we do things that are out of your will. That we would hear you, Father, when we do things that are not according to your will and your way. We ask in the name of Jesus that, Father, we just see that we're asking you to forgive us. But truly, Lord, we turn from what it is that does not please you in the name of Jesus. We ask that, Father, we would turn from all things that do not please you in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, pour your spirit upon us, Lord. Pour your spirit upon us, Lord. Pour your spirit upon us, Father, we pray. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Um, Siobhan, I'm going to ask you. Sorry, someone sent me a message. A message. Why am I getting so distracted here? Oh, that's fine. That's, that's absolutely fine. Absolutely. Um, we are, Siobhan, sorry, I'm going to ask you to do you as well. Good luck. Um, but if you could please do both, because I didn't let you guys know that we were doing YouTube, but we are, and there's no one on YouTube. Um, okay, cool. So today's going to be quite short, because I have to literally fly out of my house at 8.29 on the dot. Um, but we are going to pray for our local, our, not necessarily local church, I'm using the term local churches just because Whatever church you go to, and if you don't go to a church, choose a Christian institution that you're going to pray for. Christian institution? Um, yeah, just choose what you're going to pray for. But we're going to look at Ezra chapter 4. Ezra chapter 4. Where are my notes? Okay, Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. Uh, I'm not, okay, sorry, someone just said something on. I'm not even going to say it out loud, but I, I don't think that's what you meant. Um, Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. And I'm going to read the King James Version. Now, for the sake of time, which we don't have today, I'm going to read very, very quickly. So Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 to 5, and I read. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the descendants of the captivity were building the temple of the Lord God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and the heads of the father's houses and said to them, let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do. And we have sacrificed to him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assyria, who brought us here. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the heads of the fathers' houses of Israel said to them, You may do nothing with us to build a house for our God, but we alone will build to the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Then the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. They troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Amen. So we see here in these five verses that the adversaries of Judah, okay, so that means the enemies of Judah, when they heard that the temple was being rebuilt for the Lord God of Israel, they tried to come in and deceive them, okay? And by deceiving them, they or in order to try and deceive them, they said, let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do. And we have sacrificed to him since the days of E, king of Assyria, who brought us here. You see how they lied to try and get themselves in so that they could, I don't know, I don't even know what their plan was, but they lied because it says the enemies of Judah and Benjamin, okay? They had no business trying to build with them. Thank God for the discernment of Zerubbabel and Jeshua. What we're going to pray today, we're praying for our churches, okay? There's a lot going on. There's a lot of things happening at the moment in churches. And these are, if you've been on Women That Pray for any length of time, we spoke about some of these things that have been happening, be it social media, be it within people's churches, behind closed doors, whatever. We spoke about these things. Okay, guys, if you remember on Zoom or YouTube, say that you remember. 
And if you don't, it's okay. But we spoke about these things and God revealed it to us that this was going to happen, especially with churches. There was going to be the separation of the wheat and the chaff. Now, it's very easy to stay on the sidelines and say, um, this person's doctrine is wrong or that person's doctrine is wrong or whatever. That's not what we're here to do, okay? Although that is the case in some cases, what I want us to do today is we're going to pray for our churches, okay? We're going to pray for whatever church you go to. I have two churches, so I'm going to pray for EWC in Ghana and I'm going to pray for FLCC in London. Those are my two churches that I'm choosing to pray for today, okay? We're going to pray and we're praying for our churches that if any adversary comes in to try and deceive the pastors or to try and deceive ministries or listen these things are so real okay and as much as people think that pastors are gods on earth okay they're not okay to be clear they're not okay they are chosen by god yes but they are not gods on earth okay they're not gods so they're not they're not deities okay god is god all by himself so we have to understand that it's not impossible for a pastor to be deceived it's not possible for a ministry leader to be deceived. It's not impossible. It's only by the grace of God, okay? And it's only by the discernment that comes from God. So I want us to pray today. And I put in my notes, sorry, what did I say? But I want us to pray that they would be discerning as the river of Jeshua were to see the devices of the enemy. That when anyone comes in, any prayer warrior comes in, any worship leader, let me use air quotes, any worship leader comes in, any person says, oh, I can help the church with marketing and I can help the church get to reach this many people or whatever. People come in as if they're trying to worship the same God. People come in as if they're trying to do something, but what they want to do is cause frustration, okay? I'm not a church leader. I don't know that anyone on this call is a church leader, but if you are, you can probably relate to what I'm saying. And you understand that people think you're invincible. People think you're God on earth, capital G, God on earth. But it, we have to understand that pastors need prayers. So instead of us being on the sidelines today, we're not choosing to do that today. We're not being on the sidelines today and saying X, Y, and Z about the church, about the churches that we go to. What we're going to do is we're going to pray. We're going to pray and call your churches by name and pray that they would they would not be deceived, okay? If it's a church that you listen to online, if it's a church that you physically go to, whatever it is, however you finish it, maybe even women that pray, it might be that you choose to pray for women that pray, that Sarah Boyd would not be deceived. Um, whatever it is, you choose to pray. And that's not me requesting prayer. Go as the spirit leads, please. But I want us to pray and we're asking, Lord, the same way as Arubabo and Jeshua were able to discern and say that we don't need your help. May it be the same way that no matter how Christian, how spirit-filled, how anointed someone might be, that our leaders would not be deceived, that our churches would not be deceived, that our ministries would not be deceived. Listen, I read a book once. Um, I'm not sure about the entirety of the book, so I'm not going to tell you what book it was. But I did read a book once where someone was confessing what they used to do when they were in which one? They were... Um, high priests or something. And they were actually sent to a church to go and deceive the church. And where did they go? The prayer warriors. That's where they went. They ended up being the head of the prayer team, okay? And this was someone who was a witch, someone who had been sent to that church to bring the church down, okay? And they were able, because they went in with their tongue speaking cells and they looked so anointed and so, oh, they were causing miracles to happen and healings and all. Listen, when um, Moses went to Pharaoh, what happened? And Pharaoh did, the Chaldeans or Chaldeans, don't know how to say that word, they did it as well. The astrologers, they did it as well. It's not miracles are a sign that God is, is somewhere. Let's just be clear, okay? Miracles is not that. Because when people read palms and they say what the future is, they're not lying. Let's just be clear, okay? Let's just be clear. They're not lying, okay? They have seen the future and they are declaring the future. But the source by which we can see the future is what is demonic. So we're gonna pray that our churches would not be deceived, okay? Our churches would not be deceived. When the enemy comes in like a flood, and this is me changing the scripture a bit, but when the enemy comes in like a flood, that our leaders, our church members would, would have to send to see that they won't be fooled by what things look like on the outside, no matter how much someone is praying, how loud their prayers are, how much their tongues sound like they came straight from heaven, itself that there would be discernment that no one should come in to destroy the church that god is building the church that jesus died for 
the bride of Christ. Amen. Those on Zoom, let's unmute and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne, O oh God, and stand in our Ezra Jesus. chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. Oh, Father, I just commit EWC and FLC into your hands, O oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord God, that I pray for Nabbath, for Gideon. I pray that, Father, they would see according to your word, O oh God. I pray that, Father, Lord God, they would see according to your will and your word. I pray, Father, that the spirit of deception that tries to come in, that tries to make people think, O oh God, that, Father, people are for you when they are not. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you would our eyes to see, ways of Father, Jesus, from the members to the leaders, Lord, I pray that you open eyes to see Lord Jesus, exactly what it is that the enemy is planning. I pray that, Father, you would make it so abundantly clear the plan of the enemy, oh God. Anyone that has been sent to a church to bring it down, anyone that has been sent to a ministry to bring it down, we pray to you, Father, you come to the you today. And we say, Father, not just the individual, what you thought might be, Father, different parts that come together. We ask in the name of Jesus that, Father, as for our church, that, Father, Lord God, you would do it. Whoever has been sent, Lord, to bring the church down. Whoever has been sent to bring confusion. Whoever has been sent to a church to bring it down. Lord, because any kind of confusion, Lord, we pray in the name of that Father, you would have mercy, oh God. God. Have mercy, Father, for the sake of your children, for the sake of your children, Father. We pray that you would have mercy, oh God. That Father, you would call there to be an abundance of the same, oh God. That Father, you would go beyond what you see. That Father, speak to us, oh God. Speak to us in the name of Jesus. Speak to us in the name of Jesus, oh God. To us in the name of Jesus, that Father, we would hear you with accuracy. That Lord, we would hear you with accuracy. Let no one have the ability to come in and destroy the church. Father, your word says that you will build your church, oh God. You will build your church and the gates of hell cannot prevail. Any gate of hell that is trying to prevail against our church, Lord, we ask for you to have mercy, oh God. We ask, Father, for you to have mercy, oh God. Father, we cry out for mercy right now. Lord, we cry out for mercy, oh God. We cry out for mercy for our leaders. We cry out for mercy for our members, our fellow church members, oh God. We ask, Father, that any ministry, oh God, people around us, Father, are in church. Lord, we pray for your spirit of the sermon. Father, to be right like Never before Jesus. that the enemy is coming into churches to cause confusion, as the enemy is coming into churches to cause division, as the enemy is coming into churches to bring church leaders down, as the enemy is coming into churches to infiltrate, Father, to bring the church down. Lord, we pray that Lord, we would remember that the assignment of the enemy is to bring down the church. That Father, we be quick to open our mouth to speak against what you are doing. That Father, rather you show us what it is we can do to help, oh God. Father, yes, Lord, if there are any issues in church, that Father, you ordain that Father, we would be the ones to spear the movement. That Father. Father, you let your will be done. That Father, you give us the, the wisdom to see, oh God. We ask that Father, the vision that you've given to our leaders, that no one be able to come and change that. That Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you would fill our leaders with wisdom. Fill our leaders with discernment, oh God. Fill church leaders with wisdom and discernment, oh God. We pray that Father, as there's so much going around, that Lord God, you would have mercy. Father, we pray that you would have mercy, oh God. Have mercy upon your. Oh God, for the sake of your people, for the sake of your people, of your chosen ones, oh God, we pray, Father, that you would have mercy, oh God. We pray, Father, that you would have mercy. Father, we pray, oh God, that you would have mercy in the name of Jesus. Father, have mercy, oh God. Have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we cry out for mercy right now. Lord, we cry out for mercy for our church. We cry out for mercy for our churches, oh God. We ask in the name of Jesus that Father. So, Lord God, our leaders with wisdom and discernment, oh God, that Father, they would see accurately, oh God. We pray for them to see accurately at this time, oh God. We pray that, Father, we would not be deceived, oh God. Father, wherever deception has crept into the church, we pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, you have mercy right now. Have mercy, Father, and remove all deception, oh God. May we see where the enemy is trying to come in, just like the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin tried to come in, oh God. They tried to come in, Father. They tried to help build the temple that, Lord God, you had ordained for your people to build. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, any church that Lord you've ordained to be built, that, Father, the enemy will try and come in, come in looking as though he is part of the building, looking as though he wants to worship you, looking as though, Father, you want to help the church advance. We pray, Father, for your discernment, oh God. We pray, Father, that you would make it so abundantly clear, oh God, what is the enemy of trying to do. Father, we ask that, Lord God, you open eyes to see, open eyes to see, oh God. Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, I just remember something, and I've shared this with you guys before, but there was one time where I employed someone, and I think that person might have been um, on the other side, let me say. I'll just say that. Um, and it wasn't until that person was actually working for me that I started to see things and I was like, 
that happened. I see this in interview and I was prayed before my interview and did it. I'm just saying this to say that sometimes something or someone can look so good. And we know that that's something I also say often, no matter how good it looks, it doesn't matter if it's not God. Okay. And that's what's important. That is what's really, really, really important. And sometimes it something can look so good. Someone can look like they're so skilled. Someone can look like they're so spiritual. Someone can look like so on point in whatever it is you're looking for. And not just even in churches, even in business, right? Even when we're going for a job, it can seem like it's so great until you find out that the person that founded the company is doing crystals or they're doing some kind of mad stuff. Um, and you go and everyone has to meditate for half an hour and do yoga positions and, you know, sometimes until you're in something you don't see that it's dodgy so this prayer doesn't just go for churches but in everything that we do in any which way that it involves people and things we need to be very very careful um very very careful so let's continue to pray for our churches um it's so important so 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 important there's a lot going on at the moment and there's a lot being said and there's a lot of expedition and you know all sorts of things that are happening but let's pray for our churches let's Let's choose to pray for our churches and not be, um, of course, as the spirit leads, but the church needs prayer. And let's never forget that the church needs prayer. Our leaders of churches need prayer. It's not, it's not easy. Okay. I have, I've had the privilege of being um, close to my pastor in London and just, you know, just seeing something um, and just hearing stories. I ask questions when I'm around leaders, especially of churches. I like to ask questions and it's a lot. OK, when you're when you're not in it and you don't see it, you don't understand it. But it can be a lot. So we need to really pray because the enemy hates church. Let's just be clear on that. OK, the enemy hates church because Jesus said he's building his church and the gates of hell would not prevail. So he's trying to make those gates of hell prevail because that's what he does. He goes contrary to the word of God. So let's just pray for our churches. Please, 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 please. Our next prayer point is we are going to pray for, sorry, my notes. Um, we're gonna pray for, oh, it's changing. So, okay. We're gonna pray if there's anything God has asked us to build as individuals, okay, be it a ministry of our children, okay, we're building our children, kind of, if you understand what I mean by that. Any responsibility that God has given us for the furtherance of his kingdom, whatever it is he's given us, we're asking that we would have the discernment that um, Zerubbabel, I nearly said Zephana, that Zerubbabel and Jeshua had, that anyone that tries to come and build with us, anyone that tries to join our company, anyone that tries to help us look after our children, anyone that tries to help us um, in our marriage in somehow some, I don't know, maybe they're your counsellor or whatever. We're praying that if they're not of God, that we would see that they're not of God. If they've been sent by the enemy, we're asking the Lord to show us, not for our sakes, but for the sake of whatever it is he's asking us to build, whatever it is he's asking us to cultivate, whatever it is he's asking us to do. We're asking that as we, we understand and we've understood this from weeks back on WTP that no man is an island and we do need help from people. But today we're praying that if there is anyone that is not according to God, that is lying to us, that is trying to come into section, that they've been sent by the enemy, but asking in the name of Jesus for him to have mercy on us, for him to open our eyes, even if we've already signed contracts or we've already employed or we've already, um, whatever it might be, we're asking God, if it's someone that cleans our home, whatever it is, we're asking God, have mercy and just reveal to us your will in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come for you and we pray for ourselves individually, oh God, and ask that, Father, whatever it is you have asked us to build, that, Father, we would build according to your wisdom, oh God, that, Father, we would take on the people that, Father, you ordained to be partakers of the journey. We ask that, Father, if there is anything, oh God, or anyone that has become a part of themselves what it is you're asking us to build, that, Father, you did not ordain for them, Father, we would ask in the name of Jesus, that, Father, you would have mercy, oh God, Father, we cry out for mercy, we pray right now, Father, you've had mercy, oh God. Remove anyone, oh God, that Father has kind of attached themselves to what it is you are building. Anyone that has attached themselves to the instruction that you have given us, that Lord God is supposed to be a part 
I pray that how you give us the wisdom of Zerubbabel and Joshua, that Father, we be able to say, no, you are not a part of this building. You are not a part of this building. You are not a part of this in the name of Jesus. We are asking Father to have mercy, oh God. Father, have mercy upon us, oh God. We cry out for mercy in the name of Jesus. We ask that, Father, you reveal to us things that are not according to your things that are not according to your way, people that are not according to your way, people that do not have a heart for you, that think to have a heart for you, people, Father, that are not supposed part of what it is we are building. Father, we ask that you will see that no matter what they look like, no matter how much it looks like they can help us, no matter how much it looks like they can help the vision, that, Father, we would see what is God and not what is good. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, that anyone that is in opposition, that stands in opposition to what it is you have said, that stands in opposition to what it is that Father has that stands in opposition to what it is you want to build. Lord, we cry out for mercy in the name of Jesus. Ask Father that your will would be done, that Father your kingdom would come in and through us. God, that Father, we would not cause any acans to attach themselves to us, oh God. We would not cause any acans to attach themselves to us. Father, open our eyes, oh God. Reveal to us in dreams, oh God. If there is anything or anyone that we've to ourselves, Father, that's not according to your will. Anyone, Father, that is causing downfall rather than an uphill rise. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, open our eyes to see. Open our eyes to see, oh God. Make it so abundantly clear, oh God. Father, from friendship to business and opportunities, Father, to ministries that we join in church, whatever it might be, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you open our eyes, oh God. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, open our eyes in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes to see exactly what it is that have your day for us to do. Open our eyes to see, oh God. Open our eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we pray for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to go offline to pray for our individuals. So I pray that when we come off, please actually pray for whoever you're praying for for the month of May. Um, but before that, I just want to share something with you. And this isn't to confuse, but this is to show you that there's a lot going on in the world. So I was listening to someone's testimony on YouTube yesterday, and it's a lady that went into occultism for a while um, due to frustrations of Ghana police, which sounds crazy, but when you live here. And um, something she said was in, no, it's fine. I'm not gonna share it, sorry, I'm not. I'm not gonna share, it's not, I don't think everyone on here can handle what it is I was about to share. Let's just pray for discernment, okay? We're praying for discernment. We're praying for discernment. It is so, so, so important. And don't just pray for discernment for yourself, pray for discernment for those around you, your loved ones, that you won't hear that your sister went and employed the wrong person. You won't hear that your um, cousin is going to a church that is actually based in a cult of them. You won't, you won't hear things, like, it may be far from us in the name of Jesus. So we're going to come off now, because like I said, I do have to um, run out of my house in a minute. But please, please, please pray for whoever you're praying for for the month of May. And additionally, continue to pray for the sermon. OK, let's stand on Ezra chapter four, verse one to five, to see that the enemy comes in so many ways. And at the end of it, that it said that those same people, um, it says in verse five, they troubled them. Then the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. They troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia. So we see what it is the enemy does, okay? He hired, in this instance, hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. God forbid, may it be far from them. And may we see the work of the enemy. May 